Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. So last week we took a look at an introduction to a communication tool called Slack. This week we're going to take a look at how to get more out of Slack with this guy, Carl Taylor. That's coming up on Teach Me Tech. Well, hello at home. Welcome again to another episode of Teach Me Tech, the series where we take new or complex tools and ideas online, we break them down, we learn them for you, and then we teach you how to do it so you can implement it into your own business. And this week, I've got a little bit of help from this guy from Automation Agency. This is Carl Taylor. Carl, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Carl's been with us the last couple of weeks going through a few different tools. Last week specifically, we went through Slack, which is a communication tool that you use in your business. I do, yes. And you enjoy it? I do. Okay. Very much. Great. We're going to find out a little bit more about how to get more out of Slack today. And uh, what we might do is let you know of a couple of quick things, a few important things before we get started. The first one, and if you're a regular viewer, you'll know this already, but just in case you're not, first of all, follow along at home. These sessions are highly practical. We're going to go through the step-by-step -step here on the set with Carl. So if you've got a second screen at home, whether it be a laptop or an iPad, you can actually follow along there also, which is a great idea. And the other thing that I want you to remember is to get involved on social media. Ask and share. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even Google+. Plus. Even Google+. Plus. Use the hashtag Teach Me Tech there. Hashtag Teach Me Tech. And uh, we'll check the hashtags as often as we can to try and get back to as many questions as we can. We'll also have the Business Blueprint team there. But most importantly, we'll have the entire Business Blueprint community there also looking at the hashtag for Teach Me Tech. So you can help each other. Share your experiences. Do you use Slack? Do you maybe use one of the other platforms like Skype or Google Hangouts and you prefer that. We want to know what's going on in your world for your business. If you've got a specific way that you've used it that we haven't talked about, let us know that too because you know we don't know everything about it, but uh, we just try and give you a nice little foundation. So Carl, should we take a look at what we're going to cover? Let's look into it. Okay. So first of all, we're going to take a quick recap of Slack and its many benefits to your business some useful advice on what channels to create to boost productivity, a real world example of a live Slack account and how it works, how to archive channels without deleting them for future use, what is the difference between a free and paid Slack account, what is Slackbot and why you should consider using it, how to work with integrations and why they make a difference, what challenges can arise when using Slack and how to manage them, how to turn on and off notifications when you need to, and finally, a step-by-step -step plan to implementing Slack into your business now, a great way to finish. So ladies and gentlemen, I think we should dive straight into the deep end. Let's get started. So first of all, let's take a quick recap of Slack and its many benefits to your business. Carl, take it away. What did we cover last week? Oh, we covered a lot last week, but uh, I ultimately Slack, what is it? It's a real-time chat or messaging program. And the big benefits really are if you're man you've are you got a team, and even if you're a team of one, it can have some benefits to you. Um, but it's a great way to s uh, segment and create little rooms or, or channels, as they're called by Slack, to, to store different communications either with people or if you are just on your own, way to brain dump and, and keep your conversations all kept in one place. Um, and it's a great platform to get out of your email inbox. You know, the biggest thing for me when implementing Slack was, well, now we don't have any internal communication via email, really. The only time would be maybe if someone's asked to set up an appointment, I need to notify my assistant it's faster because I'm already in the email to forward it to her. But otherwise, I don't really use email for internal communication at all. And that's a huge benefit that Slack can bring. Because for a lot of people, email it can drown you in business. People let their email inbox control their day, which is a great way to go backwards in a real hurry in business. Yeah. This is something that takes that out of the equation. Exactly. I mean, think about our inbox. It's the interruptions. We're being interrupted by people outside of our business. Whereas at least, you know, within Slack, there's no, the way, at least the way I have it set up, there's no external people. It's only internal uh, staff and team together and communicating. So 
unless I go into my inbox, I don't know what's coming from the external world. And what are some of the other benefits that people might find for their business? Well, it's highly searchable. So everything, uh, specifically if you're on the paid plan, is everything from the day you signed up is searchable at your fingertips, easy to find, um, which is great if you've got those bits and pieces normally in some's in an email, some's in maybe a Skype conversation, uh, some's in a file. If you've uploaded your files into Slack as well, well then that's included in the searchable files as well. And you mentioned a uh, free versus a paid version, but w we're going to take a look at a lot of the elements that are on the free version, but yep. we're also tonight going to take a look at some of the things that you can get if you do opt for a paid version. And we stress to viewers, you know, this is not a paid infomercial. We're not going to upsell you into steak knives. This is our review on Slack. And what we think for Carl's business because he uses it within his real life organization and to see if it might be a great fit for your organization as well. Have you ever kind of talked to other businesses out there and, and discussed Slack and talk them into Slack or have you found that some other people have discussed it with you and they've said sounds great but I think I'll stick to Skype or Google Hangouts or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, well, a bunch of my friends and colleagues are often sharing ideas. And, and so Slack's come up and people ask how I use it and I've showed them. And, and for some businesses, especially businesses with a team, it can really be a, an obvious way to go, especially if you've got a virtual team like I do where we're not all in the one office, we all work from home, um, but we're all around the world. We need a central way across time zones, across everything to kind of keep communication in place. But there are times when maybe it won't make sense or you know, you, you need a specific integration or you've already got another tool. And there are other competitors out there. There's tools like HipChat, which is kind of similar to Slack, but just another version. There's also now Teamwork uh, Chat. I think it's called Teamwork Chat that does something similar. It's not quite the same. So not only is there Skype and say Google Hangouts, there are these other kind of group chat or real-time messaging tools out there that do similar things. So it's about finding what meets your needs, trying them out. Most of them have free trials and you just kind of see if it works. I think the real winner is us as business owners, the consumer, because there's so many out there vying for your business. You just don't necessarily know what the next plan or the feature is going to be for one particular platform, but they're all fighting for our business. True. So Very we're, true. as the consumer, the real winner, which is good. So the next thing that we are going to cover tonight, uh, some useful advice on what channels to create to boost productivity. So we talked about channels last week, but mm. very quickly, once again, channels are a way to segment different groups within Slack so that you can keep conversations separate. Yeah, I like to think of channels as two, maybe two analogies. You could have channels that are kind of rooms if you had an office, you know, and these are different rooms and, and it's a room that the door's not locked. Right, so a channel is something that the door's not locked. Any person who's part of your team can join that group, can walk into that room and join into the conversation and see all of the history of what's been going on in that communication from the day they came in. Uh, the other type of way it can work if you don't have a team and you're working one-on-one, -on -one, it's it could be different post-it or whiteboards, if you like, or, or where you're putting in different post-it notes and thoughts, and you just kind of, here's my whiteboard on marketing, here's my whiteboard on my blog, and you're just able to keep them in separate places. Okay, great. So when we're talking about that, we've already started to get into some useful advice on uh, what channels to create to boost productivity. What channels have you created in within your business? This isn't going to be the same for everyone out there, but what were your first thoughts? What channels would you recommend someone starts with? So, I mean, there's a number of ways you could do it. You could go based on um, groups, uh, normal departments, if you like, of your business. So you could break it up into departments. Um, so you could have your finance department, you could have your marketing department. The way I went about it is I kind of was like, well, firstly, I, we, I'm a virtual team. I want to have a way. We, we've got a big value of having fun and, and chatting. So we, the first one I created was called the water cooler. And the water cooler was the idea of if you go to the water cooler in an office, it's off or the kitchen or whatever, it's where you kind of go and chat, right? And so the whole purpose of that is this is where you can just have random conversations. Now the team sometimes will talk business in there because that's just where they happen to be. But most of the time it's posting funny videos or random stuff just to allow them to have fun and connect and, and just chat off business topics and, and about anything they like. Um, so that was a big one. Training is a huge value in our company. We do a lot of training um, on all the different tools and things we support. And so we have a channel dedicated to training where every time a new video and training is uploaded, it instantly gets applied into that 
um, and we use integrations which we can talk about to do that, uh, as well as other resources like Google Sites and things we use to, to store our training materials. It's just a nice little place that all training communication can be covered in that one place. Okay, great. So we've got a, a social hub, which I also love because it says to a team, you know what, we know that it's not head down, backside up, 24 seven for work, there is going to be a social element. And, and for a lot of businesses and companies, social elements actually help increase productivity, but Definitely. this is a way to manage it. Yes. So instead of saying, you know, people are going to be kind of chatting outside the organization and wasting time, they know that they can actually have that water cooler chat. It, you know that it's a safe environment for them. They know that it's a safe environment for them and then they can get on with their day's work. It's true. So we've got the water cooler. We've also got training. What sort of other channels should we be creating to help boost productivity? So if you're a business that does projects, like if you've got clients and you kind of take on a client for a short period of time as a project and you need to have a lot of communication. Uh, before I went to Slack, I was using Teamwork PM as our project management system. And uh, while I still am paying for it, I'm not actually using it because since implementing Slack, we just found it so much simpler and easier, at least the way we were working, for us to create a channel per project that we could later archive away and still be searchable. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.